Good morning. Egan Berger and Weiner LLC is an independent financial services firm which is experienced in all aspects of investment and retirement planning. Here with more is certified financial planner Howard Pressman. Good morning. Good morning, how are you? I'm doing well, we've got lots to talk about. When it comes to financial planning, I'm sure you've seen it all. People get all freaked out <laughs> when things happen in the news. Let's talk about that a little bit. What would you say are the four most uh, dangerous words? So, you know, this takes me back to a lecture that one of my business professors gave, and obviously this is a long time ago. Um, <laughs> Not so obvious. <laughs> thank you. But, uh, you know, according to him, the four most dangerous words were, this time it's different. Uh, so hmm. I've always tried to keep that in mind as a way to provide context around things that, that are happening. So I was really reminded of it very recently when we went through the federal government shutdown. Obviously, there was a lot of people who, who were concerned. Uh, there, you know, people were scared. They were questioning the direction of our country. They were questioning uh, you know, our politicians and, and even some of our clients. So what I decided to do was to write a paper uh, for our website to go back in, in history and take a look at the stock market and events that were occurring at the same time. So I started with uh, um, August 8th of 1974, which was the day before Richard Nixon resigned, and I chose that point in time specifically because I felt that that was another time where angst about our politics and politicians were at a high point. Um, so at, the, at that time, the Standard & Poor's 500 stock index opened up at uh, 81.57. Um, so since that, you know, in the intervening 40 years, obviously a lot of bad things have happened, and I certainly won't remember all of them, but, you know, we had um, Black Monday in uh, uh, October of 1987 when the stock market fell 22%. Um, we had the Oklahoma City bombing, the SNL uh, savings and loan crisis. Uh, we had the Oklahoma City bombing, um, uh, you know, the Iraq wars. Uh, we've had the Afghanistan wars, September 11th. So a lot of terrible things have happened uh, over those 40 years. Uh, and you know, despite all of that, the S&P 500 today opened up at 1,800. Um, so okay. over that time, that's an astounding more than 2,000% return uh, for investors who participate in the market over that time. Despite what's happening in the exactly. news. Exactly. So despite all of that, despite everything that's happened, you know, the U.S. economy has done really well, U.S. businesses have done really well, and investors, again, who were participating did really well. So there is a study, I think it's the Pew Research study, which says that most people spend at least 68 minutes listening to the news. And I'm sure they're freaking out <laughs> and thinking, all right, oh, maybe I should sell my stocks or maybe I need to do something different. And then, you know, even with the report, that you said you just wrote. What do you tell them? I mean, other than, look, things have happened in the past, things are always going to happen, just stay the course. How do you calm them down? Um, you know, and that's a big part of, part of my job uh, as, a, as a financial planner because, uh, you know, it's all about keeping things in context. Um, you know, the way that our brain processes information, uh, we're susceptible to something called a recency bias. Uh, and what the recency bias is, is that our brains weigh recent experiences more heavily than a does past experiences. Um, so if you were to try and, and think about an event that happened a long time ago, an uncomfortable event, you'll probably have some difficulty uh, recalling you know, or quantifying the, the pain. Um, but if you think about a more recent event, you probably have no problem thinking about how bad that hurt and perhaps it even still has an emotional uh, reaction in you. Um, so combined, so our brain is really blowing these things out of proportion uh, more than what they really are. And then you combine that with our fight versus flight response that again is, is uh, uh, ingrained into our, into our brains and our subconscious. That part of our body is saying, we have to take action. I perceive a threat to our well-being. We've got to take action. Um, so in many instances, you know, our bodies want us to take action, even though that's most times the worst thing you can <laughs> right. do for your long-term financial health. Right. And when it comes to money, people are emotional anyway. Absolutely. So yeah. you've probably got to go the extra mile to say, listen, I've been doing this a long time. Just relax and stay the course. Yeah, and again, a big part of, of the job is to is to help people keep their emotions in check. You know, uh, you know we're emotional beings. Uh, you know, we rule our you know our emotions. Oftentimes, can rule us. Uh, and money itself is an extremely emotional oh, uh, topic. You know, we we pin our hopes and our dreams and our future to to money often. Uh, and 
our society really places a extremely high value on money. So it gets very emotional and it's important for us to keep that in check and to have a you know sort of dispassionate third party who can help us to assess what's going on, uh, who probably has a better, a, a, a greater knowledge of current events more than just a cursory reading uh, of, a, uh, of an article, uh, and, and can help us to, uh, to make these decisions, assess how these decisions uh, and how these events are going to impact us you know, in the future. Because as we saw, uh, all those events that have occurred in our past, uh, as terrible as they were, they've had very little impact on the stock market today. Absolutely. Uh, and if you think about a, an investor who in August of 1974, as Richard Nixon was getting uh, impeached uh, or quit, decided, you know what, you know, our country is headed in the wrong direction, we're circling the drain here, I'm out of the stock market, uh, and, and left the stock market. And they really, uh, you know, left all those great returns on the table, and it probably had a, a detrimental impact on their long-term financial well-being. I would imagine. Now, here yeah. we are at the end of 2013, getting ready to go into 2014. As a certified financial planner, any advice you want to give to people, uh, things that we should be doing right now to make sure we're in good shape for next year financially? Um, you know, end of the year is, is always a good time. And I think it's one of those New Year's resolutions. I'm going to get my financial house in order. Um, and, yeah, you know, it's, yeah, it's, <laughs> one it's of a mine. great time to, to find yourself a, a financial planner, sit down with somebody and have them assess. And, you know, it's so much more than investing uh, when it comes to fun true financial planning. Uh, you know, we're looking at your goals. We're looking to help you to develop your goals. Uh, we're looking at insurance. Do you have the right amounts of insurance and the right types of insurance? Um, you know, so it's, it's so much more. Uh, you want to have somebody sit down and do a comprehensive review uh, of everything. Uh, and now is a great time to do it. Oftentimes we're more motivated uh, as part of our, I think it's one of the top, uh, aside from getting in better shape. Right. Um, it's <laughs> exactly. one of the top uh, Goals. Uh, New Year's resolutions. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, act on that. Don't just, you know, don't just uh, let it be a fleeting, you know, take advantage of this opportunity when it's front of mind and really go out and do something about it. That's a great it. idea. Yeah. And also just so so that people have a more realistic view of what's happening in the economy when they're watching the news. What do you suggest? You know, again, it's, it's about keeping things in context. And the context is your long-term goals. Because, you know, we're investors, and investors uh, have long-term goals 10 years, 20 years, 30 years down the road. And whether it's planning for your retirement, uh, putting a child through college, uh, a, a second home or a business, whatever that is, it's in the future. Um, and so you need that, that you know, knowledgeable, dispassionate third party to be able to help you to say, okay, this is what's happening today, and this is what you know the likely out you know uh, um, impact is going to be on your longer term goals, uh, and and trying to keep it because as we saw before, you know, the events that are occurring today really are, are going to have very little, if any, impact on the the long term future. Thank and you. And if you take actions on that, it may be uh, detrimental to your long term financial health. That's good advice, Howard. Thank, thank you. you very much for yeah. joining us this morning. We look forward to seeing you the next You're time. You're very welcome. Happy holidays. Happy holidays to you, you too. And we'll have more Let's Talk Live coming up right after this break.